Hello, this is Miss Weaver, and this is the video set for Chapter 4, and this video is Part 1. Alright, so this video is actually going to contain information for both sections 4.1 and 4.2. Uh, the main concepts we're going to talk about from 4.1 are scatter diagrams or scatter plots. Um, also the properties of the linear correlation coefficient, which we call R and the linear relation between two variables, which we uh, talk about based on that value for R. And then um, we're also gonna talk about some things from section 4.2. The main concepts that we're gonna hit from section 4.2 are the least squared regression line, which a lot of times I will abbreviate LSRL, -L, even though I will speak that to say least squared regression line, that's a lot easier to write. We'll also talk about making predictions based on our information we have. Now, whether we use the least squared regression line or another value, we'll talk about that. Um, and then we will talk about how we interpret the slope and y-intercept of the least squared regression line. In this first part of our video set, we're going to talk about scatter diagrams and how we get those on the calculator. Uh, to do that, what we want to do um, is to go to second y equals and select plot one or if you're doing multiple of these and you want to use a different plot then you're welcome to make sure you turn the plot on otherwise you can make all these changes in the window and it's when you hit graph it's just going to be a blank screen so make sure you turn your plot on and then the plot type is actually the very first option that's our scatter diagram and that's what we're going to use uh, for this chapter. Your X list and your Y list. Well, when we've talked about these um, in the uh, video, or the uh, interactive assignment, your X list is going to be your um, independent here we go, variable or what we sometimes call the explanatory variable. And your Y list is going to be your dependent or response variable. So when we're thinking about this of what is X and what is Y, most of the problems that you'll be dealing with will actually tell you which one should be X and which one should be Y. But if it doesn't, then try and figure out which one are you trying to uh, change in order to observe the differences in the other. So in this case, you know, our X is what we're changing. We're changing those independently and then the Y values depend on what X value we chose. So that's what we're going to be uh, using for our X list and Y list. Then we're gonna uh, select the mark. You can change that if you want. Um, I like the square just because it's the biggest uh, as far as visually speaking. The plus sign is fine too. The little dot um, is smaller, but it depends on if you have a very large data set versus a smaller data set. If you have, you know, if you were typing a hundred or more numbers into your list, which heaven knows I don't want to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, if you did have a large data set in your calculator, then that smaller dot, that little period or decimal instead of the square would just allow you to be able to see uh, the individual dots a little bit better. That's the only thing for there. All right, so once you do that, you can hit zoom nine. So remember option nine is going to be zoom stat and that's going to automatically fit your graph into the window or fit your window to the graph and so when i do that my graph looks like this now this is just a random two lists of data that i had um i don't even know what the first set of numbers were i already had some numbers in l1 i just threw in some numbers into l2 so this is literally just completely made up data uh, or numbers, not even data, that I've put in, and then this is what it looks like. So each X, um, 
is paired with a y, and that gives us a point on the coordinate plane. So there is our scatter diagram on the TI-84. So let's start an example, and we're actually going to use this same example through all the videos uh, for this chapter. So um, the following data, which is on the, the next slide, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, are based on a study for drilling rock. Researchers wanted to determine whether the, t the time it takes to dry drill a distance of five feet in rock increases with the depth at which the drilling begins. So we're going to be given uh, this starting depth. So did they start um, at ground level, 10 feet down, 20 feet down, 100 feet down? We've got those values. And then the time, how long did it take uh, it to, to drill five feet, a depth, an additional depth of five more feet? So we're trying to, to determine the time that's going to be our response variable. That's what we're looking to gather the data from. So our response variable will be the time to drill five feet. And what is going to potentially change that is our is going to be our explanatory variable. And in this case, what they're doing to determine, you know, will this make a difference? is the depth at which the drilling began. So uh, initial depth. And I don't think that's what I call it in the um, in the table on the next page. I think it's just uh, depth that drilling began or something like that. But that starting depth, that's going to be our explanatory variable. Uh, yes, so the depth drilling begins in feet starting at 35 feet, going all the way to 190 feet. Uh, that's our independent variable or our explanatory variable. We're going to use that and change that variable in order to see what happens to the time it takes to drill five feet, an additional five feet. So we've got our times listed here. That will be our Y value. Now for our calculators, we're going to put these uh, in L1 and L2. So we want our X values in L1 and our Y values in L2. So I've already done that in my calculator. If you want to pause so that you can get those put in so that you can kind of go through those steps on the calculator with me, uh, go ahead and pause the video now and do so. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to keep going and we'll see how we can draw this scatter diagram. All right, so again, same example. I've just got that uh, written out again, but we're going to draw a scatter diagram of the data and we're going to do this on our calculators. Now, yes, you should be able to plot these points yourself on a graph, uh, but for the sake of one, um, we nobody really does these things by hand anymore because we have technology. And two, especially with large numbers like this, getting everything to scale and getting everything to, to fit is just uh, tedious. So whether you're using Microsoft Excel, StatCrunch, your TI-84 calculator, or some other form of technology to create a scatter diagram, that's what we're going to try to focus on. Otherwise, um, if, you know, if I've got some value and uh, let's see, uh, 35 feet, just this first data point, and 5.88 minutes. So if that's how long it took, then I would go along, you know, here's my x-axis, whatever I'm scaled by, uh, there's 35, and then, you know, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, there's 5, there's 6, and so I would just put a dot, if I were doing this by hand, you know, close to 6. I would estimate to the best of my ability 5.88 uh, for 35, and then my next point would be, you know, I would do the same idea. So, um, we're not going to try and do these by hand. We're going to do this in the calculator. And the way we do that, if you remember, is going to second. So the second button. And then the Y equals button, which is up underneath the screen. Second Y equals, that takes us to our stat plot. All right, so once you get to that second Y equals and you select enter to select plot one, uh, again, don't forget to turn your plot on if it's not already. And then you want to make sure you use this first uh, graph. This first option is our scatter plot, so we don't have to uh, switch that around. 
we're going to go to uh, where we put in our X list and Y list. Well, unless you put your list in different places, you can just put L1 and L2. So remember we said that our, uh, our starting depth was going to go into L1 and then our time was going to go into L2. So that's where we want to start. Once we've done that and we've got all those things in place and we hit zoom nine. So zoom nine takes us to our, our uh, picture of our graph itself. It, it fits our window perfectly to our graph. There is our uh, scatter diagram for this data set.